Hello, Spark fans. Welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we have an interesting data science day ahead of us. So you might have seen last week, there was a load of announcements when basically hundreds and hundreds of brand new AI companies came out of nowhere uh, with the rise of ChatGPT and everything going on. Now, one of the things that not a lot of people expected is that Databricks came out with their own version of a generative AI. And they call it Dolly because it's clones and sheep and all that kind of stuff, which is super, super interesting. So we mentioned it in the monthly updates last week. Uh, it's just a new thing. But what does it mean? I mean, how do you compare it to ChatGPT? How do you compare it to all of the other AI things that have suddenly cropped up and people are talking about? What can you use it for? What does it mean for you as someone who's got Databricks and, or a user? Or what does it mean to you as someone who's never even gone anywhere near Databricks and you've just heard all these announcements? Well, eh, that's the plan. We want to talk about this new thing called Dolly, what it means, where it fits, and how you should think about it. That is the plan for today. Now, obviously, I'm not a data scientist, so we've got Gabby back, and I'll bring her on in a second, and she's going to take us through the whole idea of Dolly and what it's for. In the meantime, if you're after Spark training, don't forget we do have our discounts. You can go to the Spark fans on our website. I'll put a link down below as usual. And if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, one of the things we do want to know is what you want to use this thing for. So we'll be asking you a few times throughout this video going, what ideas do you have? What problems would you like to solve? What things have you thought? Oh, maybe you could use ChatGPT for, and maybe you can use Dolly and we can see what works and what doesn't work. But without further ado, I'm going to bring Gavi in. Hello, Gavi. Welcome back. Hey, Simon. It's a, it's a different background. It is, yes. I'm not in the UK at the minute. See, this is this is this Gavi working from a holiday location such as the digital nomad lifestyle. Oh, I wish it was a holiday, Simon. It's not a holiday. I'm working today, but I I am in Spain. So just just came out here for a bit of sun since the UK is lacking a bit of sun at the minute. I mean that is fair. That is entirely fair. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Dolly, this sheep clone thing. What is it? Really, really exciting news, right, about Dolly. It came out last Monday. And Dolly is based on a GPT model, and we'll go through it. I've put some slides together to talk people through it. I'm sure they've seen the exciting news that Databricks brought out last Monday. But I've been really excited just to get my hands on Dolly to see what it's capable of doing, how easy it is to pull the model through or even run the training code, which has stumbled upon a couple of challenges just in terms of getting GPUs and trying to run the training code. But Databricks has open sourced this GPT model, so it's really, really easy to get your hands on the model. Cool. I mean, that all sounds pretty good. Am I, am I playing slide presenter today? You are playing slide transition, yes. And next <laughs> slide, please. So in terms of... The release of Dolly, right? Like I said, it was mentioned last Monday in March. But prior to that, we know that the you know the massive news about Chat GPT that was announced just before Christmas in November, and how everyone's just gone crazy. And since then, there's loads of other companies that have brought up, for example, the Meta AI brought up the release of Llama. Then you've got your Stanford bringing up Alpaca. And Dolly pretty much is based on Alpaca and Llama. So really, really exciting. I mean, I, I love I love the memes coming out of this. Um, even I know. So Llama is based on large language models, LLM. Yes, it is. Yes. Which is why, if you're looking at any of this generative stuff, you'll see llamas all over the place and llama mascots and alpacas and all those kind of things, which I just love. I'm here for it. <laughs> Good. Okay. So <laughs> Dolly is an evolution on that chain of thinking, on those kind of lots of companies bringing out their versions, bringing out their iterations and evolutions. Yeah. Although there's, there's a big difference here in terms of Dolly. Dolly is open source. So anyone can pretty much get have their hands on the code or the model to train it on specific data. So you're no longer relying on sending the data outside of your organization to an enterprise like Open API. You, you can train your own GPT models. So that's exciting cool. news. So if you're doing it on a closed system, if you're doing it heavily, heavily firewalled and you couldn't poke out to an external website, you want to go and do something like that, you can host it wherever you want. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. But let's see the difference. I think in the next slide, um, we've got a couple of differences in terms of how is it different to the famous chat GPT that everyone is just playing with at the minute, right? 
So the, the main difference is Dolly is an instruction following model. So it's not a conversational model like ChatGPT is. It's also based on the GPT J6B, which that, what the 6B means is based on the 6 billion parameter model. Well, to chat GPT now, I think also, it was also last week or the week before where they released GPT-4 for their paid subscribers. But if you're not paying for a subscription for OpenAI, I think you have, we have access to the GPT-3.5. That model, however, is a huge model, is 175 billion parameter model. So almost 30 times bigger than Dolly. So the conversational piece, firstly, just to make sure people are clear, that's when yeah. you'd have, you know, you've got various ones working in Discord or working on the website and you you say do a thing and it comes back and then you can actually do it, but like make it shorter. It does it yeah. or do it and make it for toddlers as we were playing with our advertising. So you can you can have things, whereas this isn't going to work like that. It's a one time prompt and you get a response. Exactly. Yes, that's precisely that's right. how it is. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Right. And also what we said about Dolly, it's an open source model compared to your chat GPT, which is not open source, open source and is proprietary. So that's a huge benefit, right? In terms of if you're an organization, you want to get your hands on a GPT based model. And if you've got data that you can't really send across outside your organization, Dolly's perfect. Cool. But you mentioned there, so there's, there's some limitations because it was trained on a much smaller corpus. There's a few things it's not as good at doing. Yeah, exactly right. And Databricks have been really transparent with it. So in the slide, I've said, you know, struggle through a certain sort of complex prompts, mathematical operations, so, and, and bits and, and bobs there. But what it shows is it's not a big model. So it's cheaper to run for organizations. It's cheaper to do influence on. And if you've got a very focused data set, then you can get your, the, the Dolly open source training code and train your model on based on very focused data set. So that's a huge benefit. Yeah. I mean, that was me when we were talking earlier and I was trying to actually understand how it's different. What is it? How does it work? <laughs> so very much it's the, where's ChatGPT, because it's been trained on such a huge corpus of data, you can, you can just ask it a lot of questions and it will have some domain knowledge and be able to get actually fairly good answers already. Dolly, because it's a much, much smaller one, some more specialist niche stuff, it's not going to know. It's not going to have the context for but you can train it to teach it some specialist areas. So it's almost like a starting Absolutely. block you can then tweak into whatever area you're doing. Is that fair? Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, exactly that. So what I wanted to do when I heard this news was to train my code, right? So if you go on to the next slide, that's in fact what I tried to do. So there's open source code, but you need eight A100 GPUs, which we struggle to get our hands on. But if you like, can get what, what you mean is you struggle to get on the subscription that I was paying for spinning up these exactly. very expensive GPUs. Yes, that's what I struggled with. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but but if you can't get your hands on GPUs, then it only takes 30 minutes. Obviously, I've not verified this because we've not really had the GPUs to play, you know, to run the open source code, but it takes 30 minutes. And there are other kind of the community out there has, have also verified the 30 minutes. So that's really quick as well, yeah. right? If you're trying to train your code, 30 minutes. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and actually, the the, the GPU clusters, they're not even that expensive. It's more, you're not allowed to on free accounts, and I'm happily using a free that's account. True. Cool. There's, there's, okay. there's also, also other limitations, Simon. So if you click on your little um, button, it's at the minute now, the GPUs that's been requested, right? Or the GPUs that it runs... Um, it takes 30 minutes. It's not available in UK, South and UK West. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you spin up your resources in South Central US and a few other places. Uh, but you need to have it just, just to make sure that whatever cluster you're spinning up or the specific ND800, it's available in the region that you're spinning it up at. But this is this is just for training the model, right? So you could easily, you could spin up some compute somewhere, train the model, and then just post that model somewhere that's closer to your data for ongoing yeah. inference. Yeah, you could. Yeah, there are alternatives as well. So this is also, don't forget, it's ongoing project. It's very, very new. And since then, Databricks have come up with some alternatives. So if you can't get access to 8100s, you got the A10s and the V100s. So they are alternatives that are coming up. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense. But then if you don't want to train your own model, you don't want to do that. Spoilers. That's it. So the end of last week, which is music to my ears, 
So Databricks released the uh, model on Hugging Face. So if you can't get your hands on GPs and if you want them, the models that have got pre-trained weights, all you have to do is go onto the link and pull the model down, as easy as that. So I say release less than 24 hours ago, but it's actually released last Friday or last Thursday, actually. So yeah. And that, that, that was my fault. I wasn't around to make a video on Friday. I now ha hold my hands up, it's fine. <laughs> um, so this is, this is, again, so it's had its original 6 billion record corpus. It's then been retrained? Or just basically not specialized. No. So this is this is the weight the, the weight. So the, if I'm pulling down the model, then the, the model that comes down from hugging phase is what Databricks has trained the model on. So it's got specific yeah. weights. So yeah. So it's That's again like those those limitations that we mentioned in terms of it might not be great to some factual things. It might not might, might not be very good at mathematical equations. They still apply with this one because it's not being trained on any specialist domain. If you try and pick it up and use it That's for it. That's something it. in your yeah. business, it might not. Absolutely not. Absolutely, that's fine. But if you want to try it, you want to have a play, and you don't have a machine to train your own one, you can grab this, just install it locally, and then just go nuts. Yeah, what you can do is use it for inference, right? And Databricks has been amazing at providing some source code for us to try try different things. We can gener generate content. We can generate some brainstorming ideas and lots of different things that they've given us a bit of examples to. And you can just have a go, have a play with it, see what that gives you, try different examples. And that's exactly what we did. So if you go on to the next slide, I'm not sure whether you can see it. Oh, well, before we go on to the next slide, I guess LLMs, right? LLMs will not be in the hands of a few companies. And this what this means is it opens up opportunities for most companies out there who want to implement their own LLMs. So llamas for everybody. <laughs> what people actually don't know is I hate llamas because one spat in my face as a child. Hmm. But oh. apart from that, large language models I'm fine with. <laughs> llamas and sheep, Simon. Llamas and sheep, that is true. All right, so the demo notebook you grabbed a little video playing in the background. So this is just a generic one that Databricks provide? Yeah, pretty much. So what we've done is load the libraries, load the model and tokenizers. Exactly. The source code is nothing that I've created, and it, it's all what Databricks have provided. And what I was really keen is just to test it out myself to see, try it with different examples here. So for example, here I've say generate attacks for me for your modules or your course, Simon. And he came up with some pretty impressive description there. I was really impressed with that, you know. So with even if it's such a small, a small model, yeah, it's small, but we can put we can put a link to the notebook that I've tried out here. And it's it's pretty good. It's pretty accurate as well. So it does classification. It does some pretty cool rephrasing. And that was one of my favorites. You know, give me another example of how you would tell a 10 year old not eating chocolates before bedtime is bad. And it's really clever at it. So it's able to do that. Which makes sense. So that's that's the kind of problem, which is a, a generic language question, which is the kind of thing you're very, very, very happy to answer. Whereas if it was more kind of business domain, how would you send this invoice? How would you kind of respond to this customer query? It's not going to have that specialist domain knowledge. No, no, exactly. Absolutely right. So the summarization as well, brainstorming idea was great. So before coming out to Spain, I asked it for a bit of ideas in terms of what I should pack. And it suggested I should pack a trip trainers, some sandals and some, some shoes. And that's Makes exactly sense. what I packed as well. So amazing, right? Does some translation for us as well. So before we mentioned the slides, there's limitations in terms of mathematical operations. So I was just curious to see whether you can give me an, uh, a circumference of a circle, and it got that wrong. So that's down to the limitation. Well, as ChatGPT got it right in this case. But if you know the limitation and if you're using it for a specific case, then you can train the GPT Jane 6B model on specific data sets. Okay, so we put it in. Uh... In American parlance, it's it's an English major, not a, not a maths and science major at this point. Well, I think it's also evolving. You know, so if you if you wanted it to be a bit more accurate on mathematical operations, train it on, on more data, train it on a very specific data. Yeah. So if someone was thinking about whether or not they could get away with using this, like the generic uh, hugging face model, they could download this, they can try it, they can test it across some of their things. Absolutely. And if it's yeah. not quite good at understanding the kind of things, then they might need to pull it down, train their own version. And then yeah. like some post their own version somewhere. Yeah. The word that they, they, it's often used is fine tuning, right? Just fine tune your model. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. 
Yeah, so I was really just intrigued, curious more than anything, just to see how easy it is to pull the model down and you know, see how it, how it, and it's really simple. So you can pull it down, play with it, see how good it is. Think about how you want to use it to solve the problems. So that's that's why I wanted to have a go at Dolly, Simon. Cool. And you had the question of what problems? Again, spoiling in terms of the slide. Some examples of how you might use it? Loads and loads of applications, right? I mean, we've worked with customers that often come to us and say, solve, solve problems in terms of in, uh, trying to streamline internal communications. Or they're getting loads of email, do some sentiment analysis, try and figure out, do we need to triage this on an immediate effect? Are they, you know, how risky are the calls that are coming in, for example? You could use GPTJ models to do such things for us. If you've got financial analysis or in a, a, a use case and you want to train it on financial, precisely on, on financial documentation or data, that can do that as well. You can analyze loads and loads of financial data, provide some insight and trends. Content creation, that's a that's a common one, right? We use ChatGPT now or GPTJ now, and we even prove that with Dolly, we can do content creation very easily. So there's loads and loads of different use cases, Simon. Right, it's very, very, very cool. Um, I mean, so like the internal communications, that's the kind of thing that you used to have to do like an ensemble of a couple of different machine learning models to try and do, right? You might do something to sentiment and then do a yes. classification based on sentiment and a few other things to decide where the priority <laughs> does. And it used to be a, a fairly tricky thing to try and put together. And it's just basically an, another approach that's making some of those models easier. Yeah, exactly. That's very Absolutely. Cool. Now, the question I was, uh, I was having before that is fine tuning. Uh, so if we take this model that's been, you know, kind of uh, originally, originally tuned using kind of what six billion uh, parameters, and we yes. say, right, I want to fine tune it against my call center data, so it's better yeah. at generating responses, like, and trying to get the idea of how much data you need to fine tune it. Uh, we don't know. That's that's our next project, Simon. So I'd like to go away. Right, train train LLMs on a specific data set and curated data set and see how that performs. So I like to use this, I like to get hands on GPUs and train and use Dolly to train on specific data sets. So that's something that I would love to do next. And that's that's kind of a, a good a good answer we want to try and figure out is yeah. if you've got a few hundred records, is that gonna be just absolutely rubbish in terms of accuracy, or is it gonna be okay? Whereas if you've got a few thousand, if you've got a few hundred thousand, now Obviously, the more data you have, the more accurate and more tuned it's going to be. But what's a reasonable number? If you have thought about trying to use Dolly to solve a business problem, how much upfront pre-labeling and pre-classification do you need to do before you can say, right, we've got something that we can actually tune this model for. So how realistic is it for people to pick it up and start trying to use it for things? So we need, we need to do some experimentation. We need to try out a few things. So I do want to do a future video, which is trying to solve a problem with a small, a medium, and a huge pilot data just to try and say what 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 difference in accuracy does it get how how prone is it to hallucinate and come up with just yep. nonsensical answers as opposed to axes of fairly realistic answers that still need sense checking because you'd always sense check these things um and trying to get what that recommendation is it's just something we're kind of interested in having a look at yeah yeah exactly that very cool so that that's also our ask to people at home uh, is what kind of problems would you want to solve with this? Because we can we can do some uh, examples. We can kind of play around and try and solve some things that we think of that we can get hold of some data for. But if people are looking at it going, oh, I know exactly the problem I need to fix that with, let us know down in the comments. Let us know kind of the kind of things you're thinking of, and we'll see what we can do to try and prove our answer. We want to kind of challenge and say, what problem do people want to solve with this? And then we can see if we can do it. And that'll make a fun video. So let us know some things that people are working on. And yet you're up for trying it, meeting the challenge, and then coming back and doing a future video? Absolutely, Simon. Always am. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, Gary, for joining us once again. Switch over. All right. So, yeah, a, a new open source version similar to ChatGPT, not chatty, just GPT, that you can then download and fine-tune yourselves on your own business problems so if you did it, you might end up with several different copies of it tuned for different areas of your business, different domains, different problems you're trying to solve. But again, open source. You can just try it. If you've got a lot of GPUs knocking around, you can try it and train it yourself. Or you can ask Azure very nicely to uh, 
get hold of some GPUs and enable it for your Data X clusters and go from there. So hopefully that kind of gives you a good idea, gives you a quick sheep dip into what's going on. And you can try and figure out, essentially, is it for you? Why is it different? Is it something worth looking at? And I'm sure we're going to be hearing a huge amount more about Dolly and use cases and examples and solution accelerators and all that kind of stuff coming from Databricks in the future. But yeah, love to hear what you guys think about it. Love to hear what you guys would like to fix. Um, there might be some things where you go, could you fix that? And it's like, no, it's not really the right thing for that. Just do some normal machine learning. There might be some things where it's, yes, that is the perfect use case. So let us know down in the comments and we'll see what people actually want to try and achieve. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.